Lane's got freaking socks and flip flops on again. Dude, you don't even want to see my feet. You were like a freaking walking contradiction. All right, hello. We're here uh, along the Susquehanna River in Pennsylvania. Um, based on some posts we've seen on Facebook and uh, some other places, we see a lot of guys talk about using boats for access. That's something I've been doing for about 15, 20 years. Elaine got into it a couple years ago. Mitch has been doing it for 10, 15 years. We decided to bring our boats here today, some of the boats we use for, for uh, accessing some spots. Uh, we have various kayaks, uh, canoe, and then a, a pretty big motorboat that we use for different applications. So we're just gonna kind of go over each one, show the pros and cons of them, and uh, you know, let you guys be the judge of what works best for your situation, however you hunt. All right, guys. Well, I got into kayak hunting about probably three years ago. Started talking to Jason, and he sent me some pins and told me about it. He's been doing it for a while, so kind of got me started in it. Uh, I got this Journey 10 SS by Sun Dolphin off Facebook Marketplace. I wasn't too sure how often I was gonna, you know, use it hunting. So I went the cheaper route. I think I spent probably $250 off Facebook Marketplace, got this little yak, and yeah, it served me well the past couple years. Hauled out a couple deer with it, had some cool experiences. This boat's a 10-foot kayak. It's uh, 33 inches wide, and the carrying capacity on it is right about 250 pounds. I almost lost my life in this boat, so it's not a good boat that you want to really take on high current waters or roll white water stuff. I learned that the hard way, so <laughs> don't do what I did. But as far as carrying a deer out, it works. I floated them out. I've put a deer on top of here before. That wasn't the best idea because as you see, this thing's been through the ringer after the wreck and I lost that top plug and I almost took on water when I hauled that doe out. So I wouldn't necessarily have another deer up here. What I do this year, if I was gonna use this thing is probably quarter it up and put it in here or uh, float it out again. It kind of worked well. The waterways I would use this kayak in and what I like to use this kayak in is real shallow waters and stuff that I'm going on the fly. You know, if I only got a little bit of time after work and I got to get to a spot real quick, definitely taking this kayak over my other one. So that's kind of where I'm going to use it this year. Uh, all in all, it's been a good little kayak for me. So after a year or two using the Sun Dolphin, this summer I actually upgraded and got the new canoe Flint. Uh, it's an 11 foot boat, 33 inches wide. It is a little bit heavier than what my Sun Dolphin is. It weighs 63 pounds, but all in all, it's a real stable boat. I've used it very scouting missions and it's been solid for me so far. Spots I would use this kayak in are, you know, waterways with a lot more current, big rivers, uh, down Seekaville, I would use this thing. It can float out a lot of deer, it has 375 pound capacity. So it'd be a good kayak for me. I plan to use it a lot. So got some big plans for it. I got the Old Town Excursion 2. It's a uh, 14 foot tandem kayak. I think the overall weight 68 pounds and uh, load capacity is 450 pounds. Yeah, I bought this, I don't know, 10, 12 years ago after talking to Jason, you know, right when we kind of started first hunting together a lot and seeing him use these mobile setups and how how uh, nice it was to access some of these harder, harder to get to spots. I think I paid right around $700, $750 for this, you know, 10, 12 years ago and a comparable uh, tandem kayak now is uh, I think when I last looked was right around $900. So it's, it's a little more of an expensive price point for you to, to go this route, but it's nice because uh, like my wife hunts, my kids are getting into hunting now. So now you have the, the two seats here that you can, you know, have them come out with you hunting to, you know, access these spots as well. You know, to do that safely, you don't have to try to, you know, figure out other options or try to, you know, buy another kayak. You can do this. Uh, use this for you know, two people to safely access these spots. Right now it's set up for uh, for two people to, to use this kayak. Uh, majority of the time it's only me using it. So uh, <clears throat> what I'll do, I'll take this seat here, I'll fold it down, I'll slide it the whole way forward. You know, just see it's on a nice rail there. This one here probably sticks a little bit, but I'll slide that the whole way up till it stops. And then that gives me, you know, a little more centered as far as my load goes like when i'm just by myself so it gives me plenty of room in the front for uh my gear i mean i even have room back here for more gear if i need it and uh you know i usually use my bungees here to secure my bow that way that's out of the way and i don't have to worry about kicking at or bumping at when i'm rowing in and out all right this is actually my dad's kayak uh, he sometimes goes with us uh, hunting and, and rowing into spots but he primarily uses this boat for fishing um it is a 10 foot long Old Town Dorigo, I think is how you say it. The capacity of this boat's 300 pounds. And I mean, for him, he, do, he usually hunts a lot of pre-hung sets. He has a ladder stand and a couple hang-on stands that he uses. So he doesn't need a ton of carry or capacity in this boat. Um, he uses this back compartment here 
and he'll stick his pack back here. Um, and then he can put out also a little bit of gear up under the uh, where his feet go. And then he'll strap his bow underneath the sponges in the front. Um, it is a pretty good boat. Uh, 10 foot to nice length. It's kind of that sweet spot that 9 to 10, 11 foot length is a good, is pretty a good length for like a single person kayak. Um, it kind of is the best of both worlds with uh, stability, maneuverability, and how it holds a line. So it's a pretty stable boat. It works really well for him. I would be a little bit concerned if you would shoot a deer, how you get out with this. You could float it out the way that Lane did um, with his uh, one buck by towing it. Um, but again, that's something you want to be really careful about if you're in some kind of fast water. That deer behind you can act like as a as a rudder and pull you, and you can have a really pro some big problems with stability. So um, you could pull a deer out with this, like tow one out if it was in calmer water. Um, the other option would be you could uh, maybe the secondary floating device, a tube, or another boat, and pull that with your gear if you had to really get uh, an, an animal out. Or a lot of times we're all paired up, we're we're hunting together. So well, like Mitch's boat, we can throw a deer in Mitch's boat, and then this guy can just go out by himself in this in this boat. But it's a good boat. All right, this is uh, one of the newer boats I have, kind of that I'm going to be using this year. It's an Old Town Discover 11, uh, well, 119. It's about 11 uh, foot long. The capacity of this boat is 450 pounds. Um, it's a one-person canoe, kind of almost a hybrid. They have the seat just rear of center, so you can use the standard kayak paddle to, uh, to row this. I've also used your regular canoe paddle and then kneeled in the back and rode that way. Um, that's kind of a nice way if you have um, some extra gear, it gives you more of the uh, compartment to store gear. So you could use a paddle, either paddle for that. Um, just use this kind of paddle, you gotta use a J stroke or whatever um, for you canoers out there. This boat, uh, like I said, being one person, um, it gives you a lot of space. Unlike a kayak where you have it kind of enclosed, uh, everything is opened up here. And uh, with a full 150 pound capacity, I should be able to safely get my gear and the deer out with this boat. It only weighs 50 pounds, so it is a very, very light boat. Um, I believe it's the, it might be a little heavier than a Sun Dolphin, but it's one of the lightest boats here in our pile today, in our, uh, that we're, we're trying out. Um, and it'll work well for um, hauling off the top of my truck, which is how I plan to get it to uh, the place I hunt uh, on a roof rack. Overall thoughts, I ran these boats. I took a, uh, kind of like maybe like a hundred yard loop on each boat. Um, all of them actually did pretty well. They all would have a place. I'm not gonna say one sucked and one didn't um, because like I said, it was based on application. If you were going to cross a smaller body of water, you know, maybe a couple hundred yards or a quarter mile, uh, the Sun Dolphin would be great for that. Um, you know, and not super rough water um, or minimal, also minimal gear. Um, It'd be great if you start, you know, bringing some more gear on, on board. Uh, you know, hang on stands. Uh, you know, you kill a deer, that kind of thing. You, something that has a little higher capacity. The new canoe Flint was really nice, handled very well. It's very stable. Uh, the Old Town Excursion, uh, that that double cockpit, hard to beat. It's kind of almost like a canoe, but it sits low like a kayak. So it's kind of like the best of both worlds. Um, only downside of that, the excursion, in my opinion, is the length. 14 feet, it weighs around 68 pounds. If it was something you were going to, um, you know, use by yourself a lot, you're going to have to horse it uh, in and out of your vehicle. Um, you could maybe use a smaller boat trailer for that. It might work pretty well. Uh, Mitch has an extender on his hitch. He has a pickup truck, so that 14-foot length has to stick out pretty far from the back of his truck. Then none of these weights are like insanely heavy. You don't have to be a bodybuilder to move them, but they're, the fact that they're 11, 10, or you know, 10, 11, 12, 14 feet long, it's kind of bulky. Um, you know, and a lot of times these boat ramps or landings or the launch areas aren't the most stable or level uh, areas. So, you know, just keep that in mind. Um, I did like the Discover, uh, Old Town Discover canoe, the weight 50 pounds, length 11 feet. So short, light, easy to, to move around. It handled very, very well. Um, the only thing is, like I noticed, like I said, um, it seemed like a little bit of maneuver maneuverability was uh, lost when I started really put some extra weight in there. Uh, you know, I had Addy back there and the stand and all that. But honestly, it was very minimal. Um, did very well. My dad's old town, uh, Dorigo or whatever. Um, not a lot of carrying capacity for weight um, or compartments. Uh, only 300 pound capacity and that small compartment in the back, maybe a small pack in, maybe a saddle if you're a saddle hunter. Uh, you can put your bow or gun under the bungee straps on the, on the bow or stern, but yeah, like it, it handled very well. It's a short boat, 10 foot long. I I can't remember the weight offhand right now. Um, I feel like it was around 40, 
40 pounds, but I forget. Um, but anyway, that was a great boat too. Decide where you're gonna be hunting. Think about your situation, the kind of hunting you wanna do. Is it on uh, big bodies of water, smaller rivers, streams, current, uh, windy days, you got a lot of choppiness. And then um, also think about the gear you're gonna be used to get back and forth. And remember, best case scenario, your return trip has a dead deer with you or a dead turkey or whatever, and you do wanna account for that added weight. Keep that in mind. So I hope this is helpful today.